Welcome to another video. I am the Starman and I'm here in Blackpool. I am actually in Stanley Park here at the moment. I'll tell you why I'm in Stanley Park a bit later on. But in this video, I want to tell you all about the Lyrid Meteor Shower, which peaks this week on Friday the 22nd into Saturday the 23rd. It's, it's, it's an annual meteor shower and you've got the chance to see meteors flying all across the sky like this. Have you ever seen a shooting star? You know like a really bright flash across the sky that streaks across the sky like that? Well it's not actually a star because stars don't move like that. It was probably a speck of dust, a tiny speck of dust or maybe like a little grain of sand or something like that, cosmic sand out there in the solar system. As the Earth goes around the Sun like this, it passes inside dust trails of old comets and asteroids and things like that. And what the Lyrid meteor shower is, it, the Earth is moving into the tail of a, an old comet which left the tail thousands of years ago. And that means that we've got a great chance of passing into this dust trail and seeing some of that dust enter the Earth's atmosphere. And as it does, it makes a, a really bright streak across the sky. And that's what we call a meteor. And so a lot of people probably call them shooting stars. And you might have even seen them. You might have just seen a random one. Okay, check out this picture that I took of a lyrid. This is going back a few years now, but we're looking straight towards the radiant here. Can you see that? We've got a nice bright lyrid meteor. I took this about half an hour away from Blackpool out in the forest of Boland. And this goes to show you that if you can get out into the countryside or somewhere dark, you've got a better chance of seeing them and photographing them. And check out this as well. I've also got a video of that very same meteor, three pictures of the meteor itself and the vapor trail that left behind it. Absolutely amazing. Just look at this video here. Can you see? We've got the meteor, I'm zoomed right into it. And can you see that vapor trail that it left behind? It's absolutely amazing. This was a particularly bright lyrid and you might just be lucky enough to see one. But like I say, you do need to go somewhere as dark as possible to give yourself the best chance of seeing the lyrid meteors. Okay, now I'm just showing you a screen now. This is Stellarium the program Stellarium. You can get it for free on your computer. You can also get it on your phone, but you have to pay for it. But this just shows you what the sky is going to look like on Friday evening at about 10 o'clock. Now you see down there in the right hand side, I've got 10 o'clock there and you can see the stars. We're looking towards the eastern part of the sky and the northeastern part of the sky. And that's where the radiant of these meteors is. The reason why the Lyrids are called what they are is because they come from a constellation called Lyra. It's a very small constellation, but there is a very bright star in Lyra and that star is called Vega. And you cannot miss Vega. If you look out in the evening, any time this week, later on is better because it rises higher up. You can see Lyra, you cannot miss it towards the north and east early on. But as the night goes on, I'm going to fast forward the time now and we'll see now these stars are now rising. Can you see that that star there, Vega, along with the constellation Lyra, is now rising higher and higher and moving more towards the east. This is where the Lyrid meteors emanate from in the sky. And if you see any streak across the sky during the night, the likely thing is it will trace back to that radiant. Okay, so let's say that you're looking towards the radiant Lyra, which is where these meteors come from in the sky. You can see them anywhere in the sky. It doesn't matter which direction you look. You're just as likely to see meteors as if you're looking straight towards the radiant. But what if you're looking towards the radiant and you see a meteor go like that across the sky? That definitely was not a Lyra. Any meteor in the sky, and you can trace the trail of that meteor all the way back to the radiant, then it's most likely a Lyrid meteor. But if it goes any other way, like that, away from the radiant, then it must be a random meteor. And you'd be really lucky to see a random meteor. I see them all the time. Yeah, not part of the Lyrid meteor show. Okay, now, I said at the start, why am I in this park? Well, the reason I'm in this park is because you might want to go to your local park to see them, because you need to go somewhere fairly dark to see these meteors, otherwise you might not be able to see them. You need to go to the darkest place that you've got. And I would say, just pick a part of the sky to look towards. I would say probably look towards the east. You can even look towards the north. I would probably say not look straight towards the radiant because the reason is if you're looking straight towards the radiant, you're looking into the meteor shower. I don't think it really matters so much which way you look. You might find that if you look in the complete opposite way to the radiant, that you see longer trails. So you're just as likely to see meteors whichever way you look. But you do need to find somewhere very dark, as dark as possible. And that's why I've come to this park here because it's a nice big park here in Blackpool. 
and the sky would be reasonably dark here at night and we'd have a better chance of seeing some of these Lyrid meteors. Okay, now the rate of these meteors is around about 20 per hour, but that's in perfect conditions. And if you can see the whole sky and the radiant is right above your head, we will never have those conditions, okay? So take it from me, if you go out on Friday night preferably into the morning of Saturday, and you look at one part of the sky, say about a quarter of the sky, for about an hour or two hours, I expect you will see a few meteors. That's what I would do. Try and go out as late as possible, midnight onwards if you can, and just pick a part of the sky to look for in a dark place, and you should be able to see quite a few of these Lyrid meteors. Anyway, now that I've told you how to see them, it's now time to show you how to photograph them. Okay, so we're now looking towards my camera. I've got a Nikon D850 camera here, and this is a 20 millimeter f 1.8 lens, which is a pretty fast lens. In fact, if you want to capture meteors, you need to use the fastest lens that you can get, something like f 2.8 or quicker, if you can, if you've got them. And I've also got this, uh, can you see this like a, it's a remote thing that you just press and takes a picture there. That's what you need. If you've got something similar to this, a DSLR, you're good to go to try and photograph Lyrid meteors. I just want to show you some good settings that you can use to try and capture them. Okay, now just before I show you the settings, I just want to show you how to focus your lens because you're gonna to want to make sure the lens is focused on infinity. Now we're looking down the lens here now, it's saying that we're focused on about 0.4 meters there. So what I want to do is rotate this now until that figure of eight there, that means infinity. That figure of eight is right in the middle. Can you see right there? That means that we're now focused on infinity and that means all the stars will be sharp and then we can try to capture these Lyrid meteors. Now for the settings. Okay, so we're just looking at the back of the camera now and I just want to show you some of these numbers up here. Can you see this screen up here? I firstly want to show you that I'm in manual mode. You want to be in manual mode, ideally. And as we go along here, can you see that there? That says 15 seconds. So I've got the shutter speed set to 15 seconds. That's quite long. The longer the better, but not too long that you get trailing stars. And can you see this number on the end here on the right hand side? That's the aperture. Now this lens is pretty fast. It's actually an f1.8 lens. Can you see? That's pretty fast. It lets a lot of light the faster lens you've got the more chance you've got of capturing meteors so there's something else as well I need to go into and that's the ISO can you see I've got the ISO set to 1600 now I can probably get away with using an ISO of 1600 because I'm using a lens that's f1.8 but if your lens is say f2.8 or f3.5 it's slower then you might want to use an ISO maybe 3200 or up to 6400 and if you use those settings there 15 seconds the fastest aperture you've got and an ISO of 3200 to 6400 that will give you the best chance of capturing the meteors just point your camera to a single part of the sky and just keep taking pictures and hopefully you might just catch one so there you go, that's the Lyrid Meteor Show. It peaks on Friday the 22nd into Saturday the 23rd Make sure you get out if it's clear and get a chance to see some of these amazing fireballs, hopefully fireballs across the sky if you're lucky. And try to go somewhere dark if you can and hopefully those tips that I gave you to photograph them, you might even be able to capture one on camera. Anyway, I hope you like this video. If you do, hit the like button and also hit subscribe and tick the bell for notifications of new videos. And I will see you again on the next one.